with all his limitations <coughs> with all his problems with all his desires all his emotional issues the limited individual is the meaning of form and tat is ishwara who is the cause of this whole universe and being the cause of the universe he is all pervasive because the cause pervades everything he is all pervasive he is sarvajna he has all knowledge all pervasive all knowledge all power free from complaints asamsari jiva is samsari ishvara is asamsari jiva is alpajna our knowledge is limited ishvara is sarvajna jiva is pratyaksh aparoksh we know our senses jiva pratyaksh whereas ishvara is paroksha to know the presence of ishvara someone has to tell us there is ishvara paroksha to say you are here nobody has to tell you you are evident to yourself all your problems are evident to yourself all your limitations are evident to yourself so you are pratyaksha ishvara is paroksha we know ishvara from the shastra so jiva and ishvara both have mutually opposite characteristics when two things have mutually opposite characteristics how can they be equated how can they be one it is like equating equating a mosquito with an elephant Viveka Chodamani gives the example Khadyota Bhanvoho Khadyota Khadyota means the firefly Firefly also is a light Sun Sun is also light So how can this the firefly also is light Sun is also light can you equate them you cannot equate the firefly is not limited light and the sun illumines everything 
they cannot be equated just because they have even the khadyota even the firefly emits some light it cannot be compared to the sun likewise this alpajna cannot be compared to sarvajna ishvara cannot be equated with the sarvajna ishvara raja bhatyayo king and the servant the king also lives in the same palace and the servant also lives in the same palace that does not mean both are same the prime minister's office is in south block then there is another peon who is working in the same south block that does not mean the peon is also prime minister someone can call him prime minister he works there <laughs> but he is not prime minister though he works there he hardly gets to see the prime minister <laughs> kupambu rashyo kupa a small pond or a small bore a small well where there is hardly any water and then there is amburashi the ocean both cannot be compared paramanu mervoho a paramanu a small atom and meru the big mountain so equating jiva to ishvara sounds like that it does not seem reasonable it does not seem sensible so when tattvamasi is told it does not seem to make sense that is why it is easy to reject the tattvamasi then continuing the class further tattvamasi is nonsense many people do that what he say it doesn't make sense that is why many people leave the vedanta classes half way and go but who is saying this the vedas are saying the upanishads are saying and the upanishads are valid source of knowledge they are the valid praman if the upanishad says something there should have some meaning the upanishad will not make a statement that is not true and the upanishad will not make a statement that is useless therefore the statement tattvamasi should have some sensible 
reasonable meaning real meaning and it should be useful to us also if i understand the real meaning of tattvamasi i am going to be benefited because it is the revelation of the upanishads this attitude is shraddha so one who has shraddha tries to understand the tattvamasi tries to inquire into the mahavakya at the first sight it seems meaningless it seems illogical but then i don't give up i try to understand it how this statement makes sense how tom can be equal to tat to understand this there is something called vachyartha and lakshyartha we have discussed this before a word can have two types of meaning one is vachyartha another is lakshyarth <coughs> generally we take the vachyarth of a word for example if i tell you you are going to the market and you ask me what should i bring and i tell you bring a jackfruit from the market bring a jackfruit what do you understand what comes to your mind the full jackfruit with all its thorny skin and all the inner contents with the wax white wax and everything the seeds everything is included so that full jack fruit which is cut from a tree and the, the white wax is trickling out so that is in your mind that is what you understand i have to bring a jack fruit so bring a jack fruit from the jack fruit you understand vachyarth the direct meaning is the full fruit so when i say bring a jack fruit you have no problem in bringing the full jack fruit only thing you have to carry <laughs> is a little heavy but you can bring you don't mind bringing okay i'll bring one jack fruit so you brought the jack fruit. then i say eat the jack fruit <laughs> eat the jack fruit what do you understand yeah you cannot eat the full jack fruit the full jack fruit is the vachyarth the direct meaning 
you cannot eat the full jack fruit you have to remove the skin remove all the all the unwanted portions and take only the fleshy eatable edible portion that is what you eat you have to discard a large quantity of the full jack fruit because the edible portion of jack fruit jack fruit is very small compared to the other portion which you discard so you have to cut it it is a big project i don't know how many of you have done that <laughs> so cut the jack fruit remove the all the waste and segregate and eat only the fleshy portion eatable edible portion so when i say eat the jack fruit you don't understand i have to <laughs> put the whole jack fruit into my mouth with the skin etc you don't understand that because it is not possible it is not practicable therefore you understand only a portion when i say eat a jack fruit from the word jack fruit what do you understand the edible portion of jack fruit so the edible portion of jack fruit is the lakshya artha the implied meaning of the word jack fruit the whole jack fruit is vachya when there is no problem in taking vachya artha when the vachya artha fits well in a sentence you take vachya artha but when the vachya artha does not make sense when the vachya artha does not fit into the sentence you take lakshya artha likewise even in the mahavakya tattvamasi the vachya artha does not fit the vachya artha of tampada and the vachya artha of tatpada they can never be equated they can never be same because what is the vachya artha vachya artha is the consciousness confined to this body the consciousness which is mix it up with this body the consciousness which is mixed up with the mind it is vachya artha in the language of vedanta vachya artha is the chaitanya with an individual upadhi the individual upadhi what is the individual upadhi our body our mind our senses all these form the individual upadhi the consciousness chaitanya 
conditioned by the individual upadhi it is called jiva and it is the vachyartha of tvam then what is lakshyartha lakshyartha of tvam pada is you segregate the upadhi give up the upadhi the body the mind the senses what remains the pure consciousness pure consciousness which is the one that truly deserves the reference i the atma atma is pure consciousness it is the lakshyartha of the word tvam the implied name <coughs> likewise tat what is tat vachyartha वाच्यार्थ इज ईश्वर वॉट इज ईश्वर द कॉन्शियसनेस द इन्फिनिट कॉन्शियसनेस विच इज कॉल्ड ब्रह्मन ब्रह्मन इज ऑल्सो नथिंग बट कॉन्शियसनेस प्योर कॉन्शियस with the maya upadhi consciousness with the maya upadhi which makes the consciousness into the cause of the universe jagat karana with the maya upadhi the consciousness brahman becomes jagat karana and that is when we call it ishvara so ishvara with the maya upadhi is the vachyartha of the word tat and what is the lakshyartha the lakshyartha is you give up maya give up the upadhi in your understanding if you give up maya what remains only pure consciousness pure chaitanya shuddha chaitanya therefore the essence of an individual and the essence of the ishvara both are pure infinite consciousness and they are not different there is no difference in the consciousness therefore the lakshyartha of tvam pada and the lakshyartha of tat pada are not different therefore the equation holds good when we take the lakshya the implied meaning now in the process of taking lakshya there 
there is some discussion. The process of taking Lakshyartha from a word, the process of arriving at Lakshyartha of a word, it is called Lakshana. Lakshana. Lakshana is different from Lakshanam. Lakshanam means a definition. That is what we saw in the beginning. Sarupa Lakshanam and Tadastha Lakshanam. Lakshana Dirdha is the process of arriving at the Lakshyartha. How you arrive at the Lakshyartha of a word? How you arrive at the implied meaning of a word is called Lakshana. Technically, According to the Shastra, there are three types of Lakshana. The first one is called Jahal Lakshana. Jahal Lakshana. Jahal Lakshana means you give up the Vachyartha altogether. You give up the direct meaning of the word altogether. And take a meaning that is associated with the direct meaning. As the Lakshyartha. The direct meaning is altogether given up. And another object that is associated with the direct meaning is accepted as the Lakshyartha. Such a Lakshana is called Jahal Lakshana. Jahal means giving up. You give up the Vajja. For example, Ashram is on the bank on Ganga. Ashram is on Ganga. In this statement, you cannot take the Vachyartha of the word Ganga. Why? Because ashram cannot be on the river. Ashram is not floating on the river. Therefore, you have to give up the Vachyartha altogether and take Lakshyartha what is it? Bank of Ganga. You have given up the water altogether. You have given up the river altogether. And you are just taking the bank which is directly associated with the river as the mean. So it is called Jahal Lakshana. Then another is Ajahal Lakshana. In the previous one, Jahal, Jahal Lakshana. In the second one, you have to add an A before. So it is Ajahal Lakshana. 
अजहन लक्षणा मीन्स यू डू नॉट गिव अप द वाच्या Without giving up vacha artha, you add another meaning. You add another object also into the meaning. It is called ajahal lakshana. For example, someone is saying, "The red is coming." red is coming red is a color the color cannot come then what comes red car from the word red red is the color and color is the vacha but in addition to the color you have to take the one that has a color also so color plus the one that has a color both together form the lakshya so red stands for red card it is lakshya when i say bring idli for breakfast bring idli for breakfast if i ask you to bring idli what do you bring along with idli you also bring the chutney and the sambar because you know just idli cannot be eaten so that is lakshya artha idli chutney and sambar three things <laughs> so lakshya artha it is ajahal lakshana now there is third type of lakshana it is called bhaga lakshana bhaga lakshana bhaga means part part means one part of vachya artha is accepted as a meaning one part of vachya artha is accepted as the lakshya artha for example jackfruit i ate a jackfruit what did i eat i did not eat whole jackfruit a part of the jack the edible part of the jack fruit that is the lakshya artha it is bhaga lakshana you give up one part of the vacha artha and you take another part of the vacha artha it is called bhaga lakshana and it is also called by other names bhaga tyaga lakshana or jahal ajahal lakshana bhaga lakshana is also called bhaga tyaga lakshana it is bhaga tyaga because you are throwing away the other part you are giving up the other part so it is called bhaga tyaga lakshana and it is also called jahar ajahal lakshana jahar means you give up ajahar means you don't give up the other part so these are three types of lakshana so in tattvasi we are employing 
द थर्ड लक्षण विच इज कॉल्ड भाग लक्षण वी गिव अप अ पार्ट ऑफ सम पदार्थ द पार्ट इज द उपाधि the upadhi is given up and we take the pure consciousness and we give up another part a part of tat padartha the maya upadhi and we take only the pure existence consciousness it is bhaga lakshan then the equation works so this is the technical analysis of the mahavakya and with this background we will go through the following shlokas see tatramasyaadi vakyam cha tadatmya pratipadani लक्ष्यो तत्व पदार्थ उपादाय प्रवर्तते तत्वस्यादिवाक्यम द स्टेटमेंट लाइक तत्वसी सो इफ वी अंडरस्टैंड तत्वसी वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड एनी अदर महावाक्य बिकॉज द प्रोसेस इज सेम दैट इज वाई वी डोंट हैव टू डू अनदर कैम फॉर अनदर महावाक्य it is not needed if we analyze one mahavakya it is enough the way of inquiry for all mahavakyas is same lakshyo do tattvam padartho upadaya so taking the two lakshyarthas lakshyo the two lakshyartha tattvam padartha udva the two padarthas tat padartha and tvam padartha upadaya accepting tadatmya pratipadane pravartate it works in the direction of revealing the oneness revealing the tadatmya between between jiva and ishvara hitva dosha balau vachyo hitva dosha balau vachyo vakyam vakyartha bodhane vakyam vakyartha bodhane यथा प्रवर्तते कंडीशंड बै उपाधि qualified by upadhi tvam padartha the vachyartha of tvam pada is qualified by the individual upadhi and the vachyartha of tat pada tat pada is qualified by the maya upadhi so if we have to arrive at the oneness we have to give up the portions of vachyartha we cannot give up we cannot take the vachyartha as it is therefore dosha balo vachyo hitva giving up the vachya and the vachya is dosha balo the two qualified ones the two meanings which are qualified by the upadhi vakyam vakyartha bodhane yatha pravartate 
हाउ द वाक्य रिवील्स इट्स वाक्यार्थ हाउ द सेंटेंस मेक्स सेंस गिविंग अप इट्स वाक्यार्थ तथा व्याख्या तमादरात इट इज एक्सप्लेन्ड व्याख्यातम इट इज एक्सप्लेन्ड by various acharyas in their respective works adarat vyakhyat it is explained with the great emphasis in many texts so so many texts analyze this how tattva masi makes sense and the author is giving just a condensed version of what has been discussed by many acharyas pages after pages this is a simplified and condensed version just a condensation so if you want to study it in detail it takes years alam banataya bhati alam banataya bhati yosmat pratyaya shabdayo yosmat pratyaya shabdayo antah karana sambhinna वाच्यापद the vachartha is what we generally understand when a word is mentioned tum means you when i say you what do you understand what you say i what i call you what i refer to as you is what you call i for you you are i <laughs> for me you are you for you you are i <laughs> therefore the meaning of you the direct meaning of you is what you refer to as i what you identify as i what is it the consciousness which is mixed up with the mind first it is mixed up with the mind and then it is mixed up with the body also for a very gross person it is too much mixed up with the body but if you are a little advanced at least you know you are not just the body but you are the mind you are the consciousness associated with the mind so अंतकरण संभिन्न बोध द बोध द कॉन्शियसनेस एसोसिएटेड विद अंतकरण द कॉन्शियसनेस एसोसिएटेड विद द माइंड इट इज वेरी मच एसोसिएटेड विद द माइंड दैट इज वाई ऑल द प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ द माइंड 
we identify with the worries the anxiety everything we identify with because the chaitanya is very much associated with the mind we mix up the chaitanya with the mind so antahkarana sambhinna bodha the consciousness associated with the mind and it is jiva when i identify with the mind i become jiva because i have all the problems of the mind all the emotional issues of the mind i become a complaining individual the complaining individual is jiva so antahkarana sambhinna bodha yaha asmat pratyaya shabdayo alambana kaya bhati it is the alambana alambana means vishaya that which is referred to by asmat pratyaya and asmad shabda asmad pratyaya means the i thought i thought when i think about myself what do i think about it is the alambana the vishaya the object of i thought alambana means object it is the object of i thought as well as the word as the word i asmad shabda the object of the thought i and the object of the word i both are the limited individual the consciousness confined to the mind and the body which is nothing but the jiva here we should understand the difference the author is not talking about what really deserves the reference i the one that deserves the reference i is a different from the one that is generally referred to as i so here the author is talking about the one that is generally identified as i it is the individual the jiva but when you enquire you arrive at the one who really deserves the reference i and that is the lakshya the one that is generally referred to as i is the vachyat and the one that deserves the reference i it is the chaitanya <coughs> chaitanya which is which transcends the body and the mind which is independent of the body and mind and that is the lakshyaarth so now he is talking about vachyaarth it is the one that we generally call i and the vachyaarth of tatpada mayo padhir jagat yoni hi mayo padhir jagat yoni hi सर्वज्ञत्वादिलक्षण सर्वज्ञतादिलक्षण इट इस आल्सो करेक्ट सर्वज्ञत्वादिलक्षण इज अ बेटर एटलीस्ट इन चैंटिंग इट सौंड्स बेटर सर्वज्ञत्वादिलक्षण सर्वज्ञत्वादिलक्षण 